Good morning, and on behalf of the congregations of Kenyon Church in Dunvegan and St. Columba Church in Kirk Hill, I extend a warm welcome to you as we gather online to worship God. My name is Donna McElveen and I am the worship leader for Sunday the 16th of August. All are welcome at worship and we are delighted that you are able to join us for this time of worship. I encourage you to check out the websites and Facebook pages for both congregations for the latest updates and information pertinent to each respective congregation. Let us begin our time of worship with a call to worship. In Psalm 46, the psalmist declares, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The psalmist also declares, be still and know that I am God. It is good to gather for worship, and so from various places we gather at this time for worship. We have come to be still before God and to be strengthened by God. So with all our heart, mind, and soul, let us praise God's holy name. Let us worship God together. Let us lift up before God our prayers of adoration, followed by prayers of confession. And then we will have the Lord's Prayer and I invite you to recite with, with me the words to the Lord's Prayer. And following the Lord's Prayer, we will have our assurance of pardon. So let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you this day for you are a great and gracious God. You promise to be with us, beside us, never far from us. In confidence, we know that your promise will go with us wherever we go. And so we praise you for your presence, for your patience, for your never ending love. As we worship you this day, we pray that our time together will be pleasing in your sight. We pray that as we listen to your word, that it will come alive in our hearts and fill us with the joy that is the good news. Gracious God, as we lift up our praise to you this day, we also take time to come before you, assured that you will hear our prayers of confession. We profess our faith in you, and yet we know we do not always live as your faithful disciples. We seek our own will rather than taking time to come to you and seek your will. We want you to give us what we think we need. At times, we have even removed you from our day-to-day -day life. We set the day according to our schedules and we are so busy that we don't allow time for you. We don't allow time to be still before you. Forgive us. When we place ourselves above you and seek you out only when it is convenient or we aren't getting our way. Set us straight, Lord, and show us how to live to the praise of your glory. Help us to find our rest in you. Refresh our souls so we can truly serve you, not out of exhaustion, but out of enthusiasm and joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, who leads the way, we offer these prayers, and in his name, we continue to pray, using his words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God is for us a refuge and strength. And God has given us his son, Jesus Christ, through whom healing and forgiveness are, off are offered. So believe, rejoice, and be at peace. For this assurance of pardon we say, thanks be to God. 
We will now sing a hymn that is in keeping with our psalm for this day, Psalm 46, and it is, Be still and know that I am God. We have two scripture readings today, and before they are read, let us offer up a prayer, seeking God's illumination on his word. Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant us grace to receive your word of life this day. Help us to listen to it with attentiveness and a willingness to be changed by it. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that your word of life will fill our hearts and then strengthen us so that we are able to do your will and in all sincerity live according to the same in the name of jesus christ we pray amen the first scripture reading is from and is psalm 46. listen for the word of god god is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 to 8. Listen for the word of God. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone, <clears throat> if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The message today focuses primarily on Psalm 46. Psalm 46 is a powerful hymn of trust grounded in God. The psalm is filled with descriptive images of great turmoil, uncertainties, and new realities. The psalmist writes of natural disasters, of political calamity, of warring nations. The world was not right. The world was out of control. The world was in crisis. The people were anxious and feeling like everything was falling apart. The psalmist expresses this through the image of the earth giving way and the mountain falling into the heart of the sea. Mountains were a symbol of security and permanence in the psalmist's day. And so with the mountains falling into the heart of the sea, there was something happening in the life of the psalmist, in the psalmist's community that was falling apart. The psalmist's security was dissolving in the water. We don't know what, but whatever the event was, it was chaotic. The psalmist builds on the description of the chaos by stating that the waters were roaring and foaming Back in the psalmist's day, water was considered to be the source of all chaos. So when the waters roar and foam, it's not good. The psalmist was experiencing some type of chaos that was turning his world upside down, inside out, and he felt like everything was giving way. Though written thousands of years ago, the psalmist could be writing about events that are taking place in our world today. The ongoing coronavirus pandemic is worldwide and the uncertainties of what lies ahead is causing great turmoil. The anxieties around the return to school are causing parents, teachers, caregivers to be overwhelmed by the unknowns and the what ifs. And in addition to the pandemic, we are in the midst of hurricane and tornado season. There are also wildfires, floods, and then the horrific explosion this past week in Beirut. All of these disasters are heartbreaking and bring such devastation. And the chaos wouldn't be complete without mentioning the ongoing conflicts among nations, civil unrest, nations fighting other nations and people forced to flee their homeland for safety. Thousands upon thousands of refugees around the world live in fear and desperate living conditions. This is a difficult time and it is easy to feel powerless in the face of everything that is happening. But into the turmoil of life, the uncertainties and the new realities, Psalm 46 speaks. Psalm 46 is not just filled with words about disasters and fighting. Psalm 46 is filled with words of God. Words of God at the beginning, in the middle and at the end. In the midst of it all, we are reassured that God is there. Throughout of the psalm, there is a real confidence expressed by the psalmist. There is no panic in response to all the turmoil, uncertainties, and new realities. 
No, the psalmist holds fast to the assurance of God's stable and strong presence. Psalm 46 confidently reaffirms that God is with us, even when the world around us might seem to be falling apart. Such reaffirmation is so important to hear and hold on to, especially when the world seems to be in such chaos. We need such reaffirmation when events far away or close to home leave us feeling extremely overwhelmed, uncertain, confused, frustrated, agitated, vulnerable, and fearful. Such feelings and emotions run deep, and at times we feel alone and far away from God, perhaps even abandoned by God. But then the words of the psalmist call out to us with confidence and hope. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. What a promise to know that God is our refuge and strength, to know that God is an ever-present help in trouble to know that God is with us, to know that God is our fortress. No matter the chaos, we are not alone. This bold, strong, confident, and hopeful promise is so reassuring, but it's vitally important to remember that the promise is that God is with us in the midst, in the midst of the good times, when all is well in the world, when the crops are plentiful and everyone in our social bubble is healthy. And God is with us in the midst of the not so good times, when the world seems to be falling apart, tornadoes tear apart communities, and a deadly virus strikes hard. We do not go through tough days alone. God is in the midst of those times as well. Nowhere does the psalmist say that nothing bad will happen to us. The psalmist was living through a turmoil where he felt like the earth under his feet was giving way. But the psalmist knew that he did not need to fear, for God was his refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. And even more, the psalmist knew that God was not just in the midst, but that he could rely on God in the midst, as we can, for God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. We can be secure in that promise. It is a promise that does not diminish with time. Psalm 46 is a psalm that speaks to us in so many different situations in life, especially in those situations that have a tendency to cause us fear. And in the midst of such times, the psalmist tells us to do something unique. Tucked in near the end of the psalm are the words, be still and know that I am God. While we are remembering, and in our remembering being reassured that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, the psalmist adds to that remembering and reassuring the command to take time to be still. I suspect the psalmist knew only too well the challenges of not placing his trust in God, of letting fear rule of wanting to be in control, of not taking refuge in God. And so he included the words, be still and know that I am God. We are to set down our worries and fears, our challenges and setbacks, our problems and questions, and we are to lay them at the feet of God. We are to trust in God's promises to take time for quiet reflection, to be still. The verb translated as 
be still, from the original Hebrew means to let something drop, to let go, or to abandon something. The command then to be still is an invitation to drop our problems, to let go of our busyness, to abandon our worries, and instead rest in the knowledge that God is God, that God is in control, that God is sovereign over all, even our lives. The command to be still and know that God is God, as good and needed as it is, is a very challenging invitation. It can be challenging to be still, intentionally still, with a purpose of being still before God. But it is possible. We know that the psalmist uttered the call to be still in the midst of his turmoil. So we know we can heed the call to be still in the midst of our turmoil. We can stop. We can be quiet. We can be still. And we can place our focus on God. And when we focus on God, we do so with all our being. The following prayer written by James Traquire, entitled Rest in God Alone, invites us to bring our whole being before God. He writes, Be still, my soul. Let me have the courage to respond to God's calling. Let me show my faith in God who is my refuge and strength. My soul finds rest in God alone. Be still my heart. Let God's love fill my heart. Let me love God above all else. Let me share the warmth of God's love with my family and my neighbor. My heart finds rest in God alone. Be still my mind. Let my every thought return to God. Let me trust in God's power and compassion. My mind finds rest in God alone. Be still my eye. Let me see God's glorious creations. Let me read the tributes to God's goodness and majesty. My eye rests in God alone. Be still, my ear. Let me listen to the music of God's creation. Let me hear praises to God's holy name. Let me hear with compassion the cries for help among the suffering. My ear finds rest in God alone. Be still, my tongue. Let me praise God faithfully and sincerely. Let me speak with only goodness. Let me tell of the hope in God's message. My tongue finds rest in God alone. Be still my arm. Let me have the strength to serve God well and faithfully. Let me do good in God's name and honor. My arm finds rest in God alone. That prayer through its intentional focus on different parts of our being helps us focus on God, to heed the command to be still and know that I am God. For God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Psalm 46 reminds us and reassures us that we are not alone that we belong to God, that we depend on God, that we need God. We need God for we are not God. And though at times we forget that, God truly does seek us and desires to be in a relationship with us. We were created to be in relationship with God. And when we are still, we are able to open ourselves to God. As the 5th century theologian St. Augustine wrote, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. And from the Gospel of John, the beautiful, 
inviting words of Jesus recorded for us in the 15th chapter. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus makes it clear that our relationship with God through Jesus, when we remain or abide with him, it's that relationship which is important. We grow stronger when we are connected and when apart, we grow weaker. When we remain or abide with God, we become all that God created us to be. And there is no better way to draw close to God than through the intentional setting aside of time to be still before God. It is in the stillness that we draw close to God when we quiet our hearts and still our minds in the midst of life and all its turmoil, uncertainties and new realities. When we are still, we will find ourselves embraced by God in ways we had never imagined possible. So, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and. Be still. Be. Amen. Now to the one who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us now continue our worship time as we offer up to God prayers of thanksgiving and prayers for the world and people. Included in today's prayer is a prayer for Beirut, Lebanon. The words of the prayer are found on the Presbyterian Church in Canada website. I also encourage you to give to the Presbyterian World Service and Development Appeal in response to the Beirut explosion. Information can be found on the Presbyterian Church in Canada website. And included in the prayers as well as a prayer for one of the congregations within the bounds of the presbytery. So let us now lift up our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. God of this day, as we come to you in prayer, bringing our many concerns and joys, we pray that we may hear the voice of your spirit May we hear the voice of your spirit that teaches, that comforts, that abides with us through all the ups and downs of life. Through prayer and in the power of your spirit, we are drawn ever closer to you and are able to follow you more clearly and dearly day by day. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Generous God, we also thank you for so many other gifts. We thank you for the gift of music and the joy it gives to us. We also thank you for the people in our life who have taught us, who have inspired us, who have guided us in your way. We thank you for the gift of friendship, for the gift of a kind word and a caring touch. We thank you for the gift of laughter, that brings a much needed smile to a sad face. We thank you for the gift of patience, for the gift of time, for the gift of solitude. We thank you for the gift of your word and the precious reminder to be still and know that you are God. May we practice being still before you, O oh God. Gracious and loving God, hear us now as we pray for the people of Beirut, Lebanon. We pray for all who suffer or experience pain through the chemical explosion this past Monday. We remember especially this day the people of Beirut. Help the injured, protect those in danger, 
support the dying, bring comfort to the grieving, and soothe the anxious whose families and lives are forever changed by grief and loss. Bless with your strength and comfort those who have survived the trauma and devastation of this disaster. We ask your blessing on all those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their security and their hope. Strengthen and guide doctors, nurses, and all those who serve in emergency services, and all who bring comfort and relief. All-knowing God, we know you are in every moment of life, and you are with us in every moment. Hear our prayers now for the challenges that are occurring in life right now because of the ongoing pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic is causing uncertainty and upheaval around the world. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. For those who work in the healthcare field and other frontline occupations, we pray for safety and protection. For parents and caregivers of school-aged children, for teachers and all employed in the school system, we pray that the return to school this fall, with all its challenges, will be done safely and with support. For all who are experiencing fear or anxiety because of the unknown, the ever-changing news, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. In the midst of the unknowns, we give thanks that research for treatments and vaccines progresses and we pray for continued determination and cooperation so that everyone around the world will benefit. Ever present God, hear us now as we lift up prayers for your church. You have called your church into being and we pray that your church will be faithful to its purpose and its desire to share your good news in word and deed even from outside the church building. May you strengthen us to be effective witnesses and always may we seek your will. Today in our cycle of church prayers, we pray for the congregation of First Presbyterian Church in Brockville, for all its members, adherents and leaders. Fill them, we pray, with your spirit and light. Fill them with your hope and grace. Give them the wisdom to know where you are leading them. Give them the courage to follow you. Give us all the courage to be and to do what you call us to be and to do. Gracious and loving God, you know the prayers that are in our hearts. And so we know that even without uttering a word, we are lifting up those prayers to you. And so we say a word of thanks to you for hearing our prayers. O Lord our God, it is with confidence that we commit all of our needs and concerns to your care, for you are sufficient for all needs. May you grant us all grace as we seek to do your will, and may we always remember that you are our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we lift up these prayers. In his name, amen. Our closing hymn again comes from Psalm 46. It is, a mighty fortress is our God.
We have come to the end of our worship time. Thank you for joining us today. It has been good to be together. We look forward to our next worship time together. The benediction. Our time of worship has come to an end. We have listened to God's word and opened our hearts to God in prayer. We have lifted up great words of hymns. We now leave our place of worship wherever that may be. Strengthened though by this time of worship together. So may each one of us take time as we go our separate ways to be still before God. And as we go, remember that we are surrounded by the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father who loves us, Jesus Christ who saved us, and the Holy Spirit who sustains us this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>